Hello, this is uh, Nagarjuna coming to you through virtual uh, teaching methodology. The topic uh, you have chosen is uh, features of multinational corporations. We will look into the topic uh, in the next coming slides. So one of the major reasons for uh, uh, the multinational corporation spread of multinational corporations is uh, globalization. Uh, the whole globe as one country, that is uh, globalization. So globalization is the process of uh, international integration arising from the interchange of world views, products, ideas and other aspects of culture, mobility of resources. So, views of various countries are uh, going into other countries, uh, the products going into other countries, the ideas of uh, some countries, uh, various countries going into various other countries, various aspects uh, along with these ideas and views and products and goods and services. Uh, there is also mobility of so resources and there is also exchange of culture. All this is part of... Uh, globalization and uh, the main reason behind the spread of uh, multinational corporations now uh, the other aspect uh, of multinational corporations is foreign direct investment foreign direct investment FDI is the control of production which takes place in the host country by a firm based in home country FDI is the defining feature of uh, multinational corporations FDI occurs when a firm invests resources in business activities outside its home country. So that is um, there in the very definition of uh, multinational corporations. Uh, it is a corporation which has um, its um, head office in its home country, head office registered uh, in its home country and has its business operations spread in um, one or more um, host countries apart from the home country. So when uh, uh, an MNC is investing in another country apart from its uh, home country, it has to invest in uh, foreign exchange. So uh, the investment is uh, directly coming into uh, the host country from the home country. That is um, the very important point uh, with multinational companies that is um, foreign direct investment coming into the host countries from the home country and international trade uh, that is uh, the part of uh, multinational uh, corporations so international trade is the exchange of uh, capital goods and services across international borders or territories in most countries uh, such trade represents a significant share of gross domestic uh, product so we have you know uh, goods coming into India from various countries like um, the US or uh, China or from Malaysia, Thailand. So these are all like th th thing. Uh, I mean, goods coming from other countries into India is uh, the imports um, which are made by India, and the goods going from uh, India to other countries uh, is part of exports which are made from India. So this is. Uh, um no part and parcel of uh, multinational corporations that is which involves uh, international trade that is exports and imports then uh, why is is there uh, this necessity of uh, globalization is the world is changing rapidly from self-contained national economies towards an interdependent integrated global economy system Globalization refers to the shift towards a more integrated and uh, interdependent world economy. The two important aspects of uh, globalization are the globalization of markets and the globalization of uh, uh, production. Now you can see from this slide um, various companies, um, the big tree there um, and uh, the roots uh, which are um, into the various countries of the world the trees or uh, roots are is rooted in various uh, other countries that is the products of uh, uh, you know, one country is going into uh, many other country 
or the services uh, from one country are going into many other countries. This is uh, how uh, the globalization is explained in this uh, uh, the slide. And we have uh, now globalization of markets. Uh, to understand what it is, it refers to the merging of historically distinct and uh, and separate national market into a huge global um, marketplace. Uh, that is uh, the very important part of uh, globalization of markets. The removal of trade barriers makes it easier to sell the products um, internationally. And uh, why the products are uh, made to be available internationally is to uh, encourage uh, healthy competition and uh, to ensure customer satisfaction and then to um, increase uh, the options to the customers which will definitely encourage um, uh, cut down the monopolies and encourage uh, healthy competition the taste and preferences of the consumers change due to globalization of markets as more choices are available to them now if we see uh, most of us uh, also eating you know the pizzas and um, the burgers and all sorts of junk food this is all what has come to Indian market of course um, the junk food is not good for health but then you get an opportunity to uh, taste uh, some things which are uh, you know enjoyed uh, in some other countries it's possible only because of globalization of markets and uh, multinational uh, corporations all these uh, McDonald's and uh, Pizza Hut's, Pizza Corners okay Domino's, Pizza um, all these uh, uh, you are able to taste only because of um, the existence of multinational uh, corporations okay too much of uh, junk food is not good accepted but then uh, we need to uh, get an opportunity to uh, taste uh, various types of food uh, which is available across the world and that is possible only because of uh, multinational corporations and firms help create the global market by offering some basic um, products uh, worldwide now you see um, the assembling of um, uh, the computer uh, systems and then uh, um, electronic goods and gadgets which can be used worldwide because the specifications uh, are the same worldwide and that is uh, the benefit uh, uh, because of uh, globalization of uh, um, markets and multinational corporations because their goods are see you can see in this slide uh, goods are from um, one part of the globe going into many parts of the globe uh, one part of the continent within the continent from there to various other continents and uh, from there to uh, all the countries um, across the globe uh, this is uh, uh, what has uh, made uh, the globe into one country that is uh, the definition of uh, globalization the entire globe is now looked at as one country and then uh, globalization of production the globalization of production refers to sourcing of goods and services from places around the globe to take advantage of uh, differences in the cost and quality of factors of production like land labor and uh, capital where um, it becomes uh, these factors of production become costlier it becomes uh, difficult to continue production in the in those countries so they need to go in search of other countries where this land labor and other um, you know uh, factors of production are available at a cheaper rate and these uh, MNCs are increased by um, the developing countries uh, which are offered you know all the basic infrastructural uh, facilities at uh, uh, lesser prices subsidized prices only to encourage uh, multinational companies because uh, they bring in with them so many advantages like um, the foreign exchange precious uh, foreign exchange and also generation of employment and thereby other advantages like standard of living all these things so that is the reason the developed countries make it easy um, for the multinational companies um, to make um, uh, production globalized and to come invite them by giving them all kinds of infrastructural uh, uh, facilities and encourage their uh, existence in their country um, so that uh, the country is benefited the home countries are uh, uh, the host countries are uh, um, benefited 
then companies uh, compete efficiently by lowering the overall cost structure or improving the quality of their uh, product because uh, they need to compete with each other in order to retain their market uh, if not uh, uh, increasing their market of course uh, um, increasing the volume of trade would be the first priority of uh, any uh, company but then uh, it is possible only if uh, they can retain the existing market and from there on uh, improve on that and develop from there um, that is uh, globalization of production and uh, two uh, macro factors underlie uh, the trend of um, greater globalization that is low trade barriers uh, there is a decline in trade barriers uh, for the free flow of goods services and capital after world war ii the benefits of low trade barriers are uh, like um, firms can view the world rather than a single country as their market the firms can uh, base production in the optimal location for that activity um, and that is uh, happening because the countries uh, would like to uh, reap the benefits of um, um, foreign direct investment in their countries um, coming to uh, technical barriers uh, which are there uh, to international trade like um, uh, from country A, country B, like technical regulations, standards, testing, calibration, inspection, certification, packaging, labeling, other uh, requirements and of course uh, imports and uh, export duties. Then technological change. Technological changes has uh, made the globalization of markets a reality. Advances like telecommunications, the internet and world wide web, transportation technology etc. has made globalization easier. Implications of technological changes for globalization of uh, products include lower transportation costs that helps the firm to transport the products throughout the world, lower information processing and communication costs that helps the firm to create and manage globally dispersed production system. And these um, are the figures which show um, correlation of technology change and change of uh, regional distribution of uh, production sites. Then coming to uh, multinational uh, companies, uh, about multinational company, um, the term multinational uh, refers to a company which operates in more than a country or which has access to international markets multinational corporations have different names such as transnational corporation global enterprise or international enterprise examples of MNCs we have many like uh, Pepsi Nike Reebok LG Samsung etc how is a company classified as an MNC subsidiaries in uh, foreign countries they have operations in a number of countries they have uh, stakeholders are uh, from different uh, countries uh, high proportion of countries assets in or and revenues from global operations and David E. Lilienthal defines multinational corporation as the corporations having their home in one country but uh, operate and live under the laws of other countries as well in brief MNC refers to the business enterprise operating in uh, more than one country multinational corporations in the developing uh, world uh, we have so many brands like uh, here you can just recognize them with the brand uh, um, you know the symbol like the first one is shell and uh, which is known for uh, a quality providing quality fuel then the Nike into footwear sports uh, um, shoes and then of course this one you can easily make out is coca-cola coke uh, the company and then uh, ford which is into um, manufacturing cars uh, that is uh, automotives and then m the big m i'm loving it it is uh, mcdonald's of course various um, mncs which are doing good in india you can understand uh, with the graph there some of these companies multinational companies then features of uh, MNC's giant size the assets and sale of MNC's are quite large these companies operate on large scale as they trade in more than one country these companies generate large wealth their operations are so large that their sales turnover exceeds the gross national product of a developing countries 
Um, example, the physical assets of IBM exceeds 8 billion dollars. That is uh, quite a big sum. And then multinational companies um, we have here like Porsche which is into automotives again okay and other companies then we have uh, international operations and MNC operates in more than one country it uh, has branches uh, factories offices in several countries they sell their products in different countries example Apple with its um, electronic um, gadgets Coca-Cola tell me the country where it is not available and um, many Indian uh, MNCs having Indian uh, origin example uh, having Indian origin are also into uh, various other countries uh, like uh, one famous um, you know software development uh, company uh, Infosys and of course some more are there and uh, professional management is uh, another um, feature of uh, multinational corporations and MNC employs professional experts specialized people MNCs uh, try to keep their employees updated by training them from time to time it employs professionals to handle the advances in um, um, technology effectively and uh, earn greater profits centralized control one more feature of uh, multinational companies the branches of uh, uh, multinational corporations spread in different countries are controlled and managed from the headquarters in the home country all branches follow the policy framework formed by the headquarters it's, it's as simple as uh, you know one local company having its um, head office uh, or the banks which have their head office uh, zone wise south zone east zone north zone west zone the headquarters and these uh, branches of uh, where ad administrative uh, work takes place at these headquarters and the instructions uh, come from the headquarters regarding the management uh, and also uh, I mean uh, lower level middle level top level management uh, um, policies are framed by the head offices and accordingly the branch offices uh, uh, operate the same uh, administrative technique adopted here also so all the rules uh, uh, instructions uh, come from uh, the headquarters of MNCs which is in the home country and all the um, branches of MNCs in um, host countries have to follow that framework oligopolistic uh, powers oligopoly means uh, power in the hands of few companies only uh, due to their giant size MNCs dominate the markets. They join hands with big uh, business houses and uh, give rise to monopoly. This is, of course, uh, uh, part of uh, multinational corporations but cannot be encouraged because uh, it uh, is a threat to the very um, sovereignty of any country, any host country. And uh, MNCs bring with them sophisticated technology. Multinational corporations make use of the latest and advanced companies, um, uh, advanced um, and MNCs make use of the latest and advanced uh, technology and supply uh, world-class products. Uh, they use uh, capital-intensive technology and innovative techniques of uh, uh, production, which makes uh, the task of uh, um, you know, producing or the production easier. And also, not only making it easy, but also um, improving on the quality of uh, the product which is offered to the customers and uh, uh, these are the main uh, important features of um, multinational corporations uh, this is in addition to uh, um, the earlier topic uh, on MNCs uh, that is the merits and demerits of uh, multinational corporations even before looking into that one we need to understand the features that is the reason uh, this uh, topic has been um, brought to you so hope uh, you people understood uh, about uh, multinational corporations and their features sometime later we'll meet again with uh, some other topic thank you